Hello, hello, hello. Today is Friday, October 14, 2022. Solutions to a high school problem. Two concentric cylinders, both with length capital L, with radii R1 and radii R2. R1 is here, R2 is here. And L is much, much larger than R1 and much, much larger than R2. The in inner cylinder, they are all uh, conducting cylinders. The inner cyl cylinder has a charge plus Q and the outer cylinder minus Q. And we are now being asked what the E fields are when small r is smaller than r1, when small r is between r1 and r2, and while small r is outside the two cylinders. So God's law gives you in principle all the answers. The closed loop integral of E dot dA, that is the surface, is the enclosed charge divided by epsilon zero. And if you take a random radius small r and a random length h, then that surface area is 2 pi r h. The times e is enclosed, q enclosed, divided by epsilon zero. So you must calculate the enclosed charge in that closed surface area, 2 pi r times h. Now, we go to the first question, when r, small r, is smaller than r1. Well, that's very easy, of course, because there's no charge inside that inner cylinder, so the electric field everywhere is zero. So the ele electric field anywhere inside this inner cylinder is zero. Second question. We are now between the two. So now you have to apply Gauss law again, but now the enclosed charge is now Q times H divided by L. Because now you only have a fraction of the total charge, only a, a fraction of this total charge, which is this H, divided by the total length L. Uh, uh, there it is. So now you substitute that in Gauss law and you find that ER is Q divided by 2 pi epsilon 0 capital L times R in the direction R roof. R roof means that it is radially outwards. That indicates that it is, this is the unit vector outwards. All right. Let's now go to C. C is trivial again. The net charge inside is plus Q and minus Q, so E is zero. Most of you had no problems with A, B, and C. Now the last question is more difficult. So an electron is now circling around between the two cylinders at the radius R1 plus R2 divided by 2. So that's a given. And you're now being asked what is the kinetic energy of that electron. Well, the force on that electron is obviously the charge of the electron times the electric field. And that's this. The centripetal force on that electron is mv squared divided by the radius and the radius r1 plus r2 divided by 2. 
and v squared divided by r is the centripetal force on that electron. So now if you make two, these two f's equal, so this one equals this one, and you recall that the kinetic energy is 1 half mv squared, then you find that the kinetic energy of those electrons is the charge of the electron times the charge q divided by 4 pi epsilon 0 l. Only, I would say, 5% of the people have this question right. And I would say, of all the answers, about 65-70% had the question A, B, and C right. This last part uh, may be a little bit tough for high schools, by the way. I would still call this a high school problem. So that was problem 155. And if you have problems with this, brush up on your physics because this is too elementary for anyone who even wants to think of taking the JEE main exam.